In Lucid Air, we have truly a technological tour de force. There's nothing even close to it. Lucid Motors is a California-based electric vehicle startup, and in September, it revealed the Air, its vision for an electric luxury sedan. The company's first vehicle touts some impressive specs, such as an estimated 517 miles of range, a quarter mile time of 9.9 .9 seconds, and DC fast charging up to 20 miles per minute. What Lucid has really been touting with all this is a holistic view of it being better than the Model S. And overall, I believe Robinson said that it's 17% more efficient. But the company has a lot of challenges ahead. Automotive companies are notoriously hard to start, and EV startups have typically been failing endeavors. Starting an EV project and bringing that to fruition is a real enormous task. The auto industry is a tough business to get into. It's very capital intensive. For a high volume model program to develop a vehicle and tool up a factory and bring it to production, I mean, that's usually you know, a billion to a billion and a half dollar effort. It's funding, frankly, that's the biggest one and why you've had problems at Faraday, why you had problems at Fisker. Uh, they ran out of funds uh, through the development cycle of the vehicle, even in the case of Fisker post-launch. A good amount of the talent at Lucid also worked at Tesla, which may give them a leg up. The CEO, Peter Rawlinson, was a VP of Vehicle Engineering and Chief Engineer of the Model S. The styling design, which was done by Franz von Holzhausen, I took Franz's design, the style of the car, and I was responsible for leading the design engineering of the vehicle. Prior to Tesla, he spent several years with Jaguar and was Chief Engineer of Advanced Engineering at Lotus. All of that experience led him to a lofty goal, to become the next big EV player in the industry. This is about far more than just Lucid Air. We're creating a brand, the Lucid brand. And we have to compete with uh, other brands which are very prestigious and have existed for, in many instances, over 100 years. We have Tesla as the prime example of a startup that was successful. We've also seen a lot of failures. You're talking about 10 to 15 companies that have or are attempting to launch with a vehicle and an EV company. Some have already failed. Even if it manages to bring the air to market, competition in the space is heating up. Last year, 143 new EVs launched around the globe. And by 2023, IHS predicts over 43 brands will offer an electric vehicle. I think when you put specs up like that and you put features and content and styling like they've done with the Air, I think it's going to be a highly competitive vehicle. Lucid is one of many electric vehicle startups that have popped up over the last five, ten years, but they're a little bit different from a lot of them. Peter Robinson has been around in the industry for quite some time, including uh, a stint at Tesla. He's got the expertise that a lot of the other companies don't have for entering the space. The chief engineer was also a, a former Tesla employee in addition to Peter. Not only do they have automotive experience, but they have EV automotive experience. Lucid was started in 2007 as Ativa, with a focus on being an EV supplier. Ativa had significant knowledge of cell technology and of battery management software and the electronics that you need to manage battery systems. We are the standard battery supplier for the World Championship Electric Racing Series. And that battery technology, which is entirely done in-house, branded under our Ativa brand, was really the proof point uh, which validated our technology. Through that, Lucid has actually learned a lot about design and performance of, of high performance battery packs. We put a lot of that knowledge uh, into the Lucid Air, so that's why we are claiming it's race proven, because it really is. In 2013, it recruited Peter Rawlinson as its chief technology officer. I wanted to create the next generation electric car. And the other condition was, we're going to have to change the name of the company. In 2016, the company was renamed to Lucid Motors, and it started building its first vehicle. Many of my engineers from what was the Model S program came across and joined me. Peter rang me up, said, hey, do you want to join me? We're doing an electric vehicle. So, oh, that sounds familiar. Peter told me his vision, right? He said, 
I want to take EVs to the next level, 2.0 of electrification. While the company has been driven by a bold vision, financing it has been a challenge. In 2018, Lucid raised $1 billion from the Saudi Wealth Fund. We were able to show the first prototype of Lucid Air back in late 2016. And then we had a hiatus securing the right funding. Lucid did have some trouble finding funding and they've had a lot of different ownership kind of investments and stakes. They seem to be on the right track now with the wealth fund investment. Might be enough to get them to market. Lucid is going after the luxury market first, similar to what Tesla did with the Roadster. If you look at the, the space for luxury sedans, it's worth $100 billion worldwide. If you wanted to buy an electric luxury car in that space, there isn't one available. So we're going directly into that white space with Lucid Air. One of the, one of the criticisms of Tesla has been, while the Model S and the Model X were certainly priced in competition with like Mercedes-Benz and BMW and Audi, they never really felt like luxury vehicles. The, the Lucid Air, in contrast, they're at least targeting having a level of luxury and premium feel that you would expect at a price point of over $100,000. Lucid's first product is supposed to be the Lucid Air sedan. We have seen a lot of prototypes of it and concept. There's a 35 inch curved display. So there's a lot of really nice packaging things that they've done inside this to, to make it both more functional, but also more aesthetically attractive. The company's lineage as a battery supplier to Formula E no doubt played a role in the development of its battery tech. We've got over 900 volts architecture. We link that with our inverter technology, which is silicon carbide, with a very special cooling system, which we developed entirely in-house, which keeps the chips super cool before they can almost generate any heat. So we're buying in ourselves from LG Chem, they're our supply partner, but we're making the battery packs entirely in-house because that pack technology is 100% lucid. We're going for a Lego brick, a modular system. This architecture is designed the way it is because it's super, super mass producible. You have a long range, you've got to have a lot of battery. One way that you can start to overcome that is to improve the efficiency, maximizing the number of miles you get out of every kilowatt hour of energy in that battery. If Lucid lives up to the claims that they've made of over a 500 mile range for the top version of the air, then uh, they'll be a, at least 14% better energy efficiency than the best uh, Tesla Model S today. Range is one of the standout features of the air. Tesla's Model S leads the industry with a range of 402 miles, while other manufacturers can be anywhere from 100 to 250 miles per charge. The Lucid Air is expected to have a range of 517 miles, and Elon Musk recently unveiled the Model S Plaid, which Tesla claims has a range of over 520 miles per charge. In the electric vehicle space, the name of the game is efficiency and range. That efficiency race will lead to the $25,000 EV. Recently, at Tesla's 2020 Battery Day event, Elon Musk revealed the company would produce a $25,000 EV in 2023, citing developments in battery tech. This would finally make electric car prices competitive with gas-powered vehicles. One of the things that, uh, that Rawlinson has emphasized is this idea of taking a holistic approach to the entire propulsion system, the entire powertrain, trying to optimize every single component in there. Lucid is entering the market as a premium brand with the intention of producing more affordable vehicles down the road. The company is starting at the high end of the spectrum, kind of how Tesla did with the Model S and then promising a future affordable vehicle down the line. We're starting with the Dream Edition Lucid Air at $169,000. We'll bring Air down to a price point below $80,000 in 2022. I would love to be making a more affordable car right now. We just can't do that as a new company. But we can start with a high-end product, with a modest factory, and gradually move to more affordable segment of the market. The challenge is you actually have to execute and make those initial vehicles profitable enough to generate enough cash flow so you can introduce new models. And that's where Tesla really struggled over the last 10 years. 
Focusing on the higher end does offer some advantages when trying to get off the ground. You're going to be focused on a lower volume. You're not trying to push 400,000 of these out the door. And we saw the trouble that Tesla had with the ramp up of their Model 3 and just trying to get production smooth and, and get the bugs worked out of the system. It takes time. The luxury car market was valued at $497.8 billion in 2019 and is projected to reach $735.8 billion by 2027. There's definitely a market for premium vehicles. BMW and Mercedes sell about 2 million vehicles a year each. However, the luxury sedan will be released at a time when the market is moving towards SUVs and crossovers. As the market is moving towards SUVs and crossovers, they chose to go out with a sedan, which is a very traditional luxury vehicle. That can either be a positive for Lucid, because there aren't as many competitors entering that segment, or it can mean that it's just trying to slice a pie too thin when people are looking for crossovers and SUVs. The company does have plans to develop an SUV. During the Lucid Air Unveil event, it revealed Project Gravity, its SUV concept built on the same platform as the sedan. It's slated to come out in 2023. Electric vehicle maker Rivian also is targeting the SUV market in addition to releasing a truck. Rivian is backed by both Amazon and Ford. Uh, the Gravity project is going to feed off of a huge amount of the technologies and the platform uh, and the tooling that we've already invested. Once you've gone through the development of the, of the skateboard itself, you have a much faster ability to launch the next vehicle off of that. And cost is down as well, because the development costs already went into the, into the skateboard platforms. Any electric vehicle company trying to come to market right now, there are a lot of challenges. One of the biggest is charging. 83% of consumers who would not consider buying an EV said it was because of battery life and range anxiety. One of the advantages that, that Tesla had was building out that supercharger network early on. Unlike Tesla, Lucid will leverage the Electrify America charging network that is being built out by Volkswagen of America. They've incorporated a 900 volt electrical system in their car so they can do 350 kilowatt charging, which is even faster than even the latest version three superchargers. Lucid is following Tesla with retail spaces to sell directly to consumers, as opposed to a franchise dealer model. We've signed leases on 14 stores. We'll have seven up and running before the end of this year, and we'll have um, in the high 20s by the end of uh, 21. The challenge is the manufacturer that's setting up this retail network has to make all that investment in those physical properties. They also have to directly support those vehicles with service when they need service. This is an area that Tesla has really struggled with over the last several years since they launched the Model 3 as their volumes have grown substantially. They've struggled to keep up with the pace of providing service to their customers. And Lucid intends to manage service in-house as well. Service is an important aspect of the connection with the consumer. It can make or break a decision or a brand, essentially. Hopefully, I would assume Lucid will, will learn from some of the mistakes Tesla made in that space. If you bring a prototype of something to life, that is better than anything that has been done before. That's an enormous task. Now being able to replicate that and being able to bring the cost of that one prototype or 10 prototypes uh, into mass market is a whole nother animal. You've got this massive factory that you're building, which includes battery components. You've got the vehicle itself, the manufacturing, all, all of this. That's a major cost. Um, that's on top of all the development that's already taken place. There's a strong potential that they're going to burn through the, the billion dollar investment that they got from the, uh, the Saudi sovereign wealth fund. Tesla is the best reference in the market, and it took a while for it to become profitable. If you look at Tesla's ramp up curve for production, it's not easy. And things have gone wrong. Things have not been on time. They've been off by months, if not years. If Lucid can actually execute better as a business, then there is a, a strong potential for them to succeed where Tesla struggled with that. Some other EV startups have partnered with legacy automakers, a move which may alleviate some of the stress of manufacturing. They don't have the advantage of something like Rivian does, and that is the backing of Ford Motor Company as well as Amazon. The next six months are going to be super challenging, and that's why I, I approach this with humility. We'll start production proper in spring 
of 21. And then we build the SUV, Project Gravity, and I hope to get that into Casa Grande in 23. To bring the air and its other vehicles to market, Lucid is building a factory in Casa Grande, Arizona. The impressive and almost unique thing is that Lucid's actually building a factory. You need a lot of backing and you need a lot of talent to know how to actually build and assemble the factory to be most efficient. In a few years' time, that will be good for nearly 400,000 units a year. So there's a full phase plan to get there. And we're just about close to completing the first phase now, which will get us to a factory uh, which is good for 34,000 units a year. Lucid plans to deliver to the North America market first, but the biggest demand may be outside it. Analysts predict record growth of EV sales in 2021, especially in Europe and China. When you, when you look at the markets and, and look at where, where EVs are expected to grow the most, you're looking at Western Europe, Europe in general, and China. The majority of that reason is because it's a regulatory-driven push from government agencies. And then we go to Europe, uh, right at the end of 21 into early 22 and then hit China in 22 because that's the big prize, the largest market in the world. Some of the vehicle configurations Lucid has planned may appeal to the customers there. A lot of customers there during the week when they're going to the office, they'll hire a driver to drive them around and then on the weekends they'll drive it themselves. And so what you find in the Chinese market is a lot of manufacturers will actually offer special versions of their premium vehicles specifically for China that have a longer wheelbase and more rear seat legroom. I think China is going to be absolutely huge for Lucid. Traditionally, it's been very much more about the, the, the chauffeur driven rear seat experience, but Lucid has a great driver's car as well. So we cover both bases. Policy shifts may also start to stir up the auto industry. Just recently, the governor of California signed an executive order that all new vehicles sold in the state must be zero emissions by 2035. But even if EV adoption continues to grow, competition in the space is ramping up. Lucid is coming into a very competitive market. The auto industry has always been very competitive anyway, especially now in the EV market. We're seeing a lot of new entrants coming in. And then the incumbent automakers are also introducing dozens of new EVs over the next several years. No doubt, Lucid will have to contend with Tesla. Elon Musk has cemented the brand and a loyal fan base in the world of electric vehicles. And in the US, Tesla made up about 80% of electric car sales in 2020 so far. It's gonna be interesting to see how this vehicle comes to market for the air and whether or not they can attract that Tesla Model S buyer. Because the thing is, people aren't buying EVs, they're buying Teslas. And while EV sales are just 2.6% of vehicle sales, there is an opportunity to grow. Investor interest seems extremely high in electric vehicle startups like Lucid. A lot of that has been the Tesla effect and also the fear of missing out. They're definitely going to be able to take advantage of growing interest in EVs. We're achieving incredible performance from our cars, not through humongous battery packs, not through low-tech solutions, but through high-tech endeavors that's what's really going to change the world. And this needs to be uh, a true technology race and Lucid is in it.